Sometimes the most complex part of a financial model is the debt calculations. So there are a couple of functions in Excel that can help you with calculating what your repayment is going to be. Probably the one that's going to be the most useful is the PMT function or payment function and that's going to tell you how much or the total amount that needs to be paid to repay the loan over a period of time. So let's say for example uh, the interest rate was 5.45% and we have a loan of $950,000 over 25 years. So we can use the PMT to calculate what the annual repayment is going to be. So we'll put in the rate here, uh, it's going to ask us for the number of periods. Uh, the uh, present value is the loan amount or the amount um, that is, uh, is borrowed. Uh, it's going to ask you for the future value and that is usually zero unless of course you have a balloon payment or you want to have an amount owing at the end of the period. Most of the time that's zero. Uh, and then it's going to ask you is, uh, is the payment, does the payment happen at the beginning or the end of the period? Most of the time it's at the end. Uh, and so you would just calculate it like that. That's going to show us as, because it's a payment going out, it shows up as a negative amount. So if you wanted to calculate this monthly, you could just divide the entire thing by 12. However, it's going to be a lot more accurate if we actually do the calculation within the function. So that's how uh, the uh, entire way of calculating the function, but we don't need to put in all of the fields in the real world. This is how we often build it in financial models. So let's go in and do it, a little abbreviated version of this function. So we'll put in the rate here. Now we want to, instead of calculating the whole thing and dividing it by 12, we're going to convert the interest rate to monthly within the formula. And that's gonna give us a slightly different and more accurate number. So the number of periods is gonna be 25 years. I'm gonna multiply that by 12. Uh, the future value again is going to be 950000 and that's it. We can just close back. We can leave, we do not have an amount owing at the end and we could leave the type blank so that there. And of course we want to show it as a positive amount. Most of the time we want to show what the payment is uh, in positive so we can just go to the end of the formula and type minus one which is going to change the sign around. And so you can see there that the total is um, ever so slightly different. And so this is a method that we use most of the time in financial models. However, we often need to split uh, the payment into uh, the interest and the principal amount. So the interest amount needs to show on the income statement, the P&L uh, profit and loss statement, and the principal needs to show on the balance sheet. So we often need to split that total payment into the two separate components. And luckily, there is an Excel function that will do it for us. So. If I just go in and do the PMT again, this time we've got a loan of a million dollars at an interest rate of 7.5% over 10 years. We want to model what those repayments are going to look like for every year of that loan. So we'll do the PMT function again. Uh, this time it's just going to be an annual rate. The number of periods is 10 uh, and the present value is there. Of course, I'm going to copy this across so I need to just fix my referencing. So F4, F, F4, F4, and that way I can just copy that across and we can see that the total amount is, the pay, repayment amount is gonna be the same every year. Then we can just pick up the interest using the IPMT function. Now with the IPMT function, it needs to know what year you are in of the loan because of course we pay more interest in the first couple of years of the loan and that amount goes down as the loan progresses. So this time we'll pick up the rate, just go in an F4. We are in period one, now that does not need to be anchored and it's the term of the loan is 10 years and the present value is a million, close bracket. There we go. So that is the interest amount, Just make that negative. And if I copy that across, you can see how that goes down and I've actually got a chart already set up there for you. Let's have a look now at what the principal will be uh, using a PPMT. Again, it'll be the rate. We are in period one of a 10 year loan and the total amount is a million dollars. Copy 
copy that across and we can see how that looks over time on the chart we can see how that principal amount is decreasing and just as a bit of a check let's go in and see we can see that the total if I add the interest plus the principal that is going to be the same as if I had just used the PMT function so when you're building this into your models you can split those out um, and add them back together so you know what total amount is paid on your debt and we need to know how much is interest and how much is principal. Let's have a look now at a practical application of how to create a debt schedule. A lot of the time we need to know exactly what the balance is over time uh, in our financial model. So we'll start with our opening balance. So we have a uh, half a million dollar loan here. That's going to be our opening balance. We've already got our interest repayments that have been calculated in there using the IPMT function and uh, it's there in our chart. And what we want to do here is just pick up the PPMT function. We are in period one of a five year loan. And the loan amount is half a million dollars. Copy that across. And we can see that those periods have actually been uh, calculated using a sequence function and we can then just make this a corkscrew by picking up the closing balance from the prior period so I can just close that there and hopefully by the end of it we will end up with a zero balance so we can see that that uh, loan amount has been repaid over the five-year period.